Hey there, Joshua Austin here from Dental Economics, and today we are going to do a video demonstration of Tough Temp Plus, one of my favorite provisional crown and bridge materials. And it's one of my favorites because it is so strong. It's got this rubberized resin polymer that really gives us a really nice fracture resistance that uh, will just keep things from breaking in your practice, which is really great. There's nothing that throws the schedule off more than having to remake a temporary uh, before crown is in. So this has prevented this in my practice. I honestly don't remember the last time that I had a provisional break. Um, another way, reason that I love this material is that it has its own uh, flowable patch material and its own uh, glaze material. And so uh, you can repair your provisionals while you're making them should you need to. And then uh, if you want to go to the next level with your provisionals, you can paint this light cure glaze on there and get a really gorgeous provisional. And so this is really just my favorite provisional material to use. It trims well, it's strong, and it has those extra components to it, which really give me a lot of options for making something nice. So today we're going to make a three unit uh, FPD provisional. And we're going to walk through the process of that, how I do it, what burrs do I use to trim, um, you know, where do I use discs, all that kind of stuff, and then walking us through the repair process should we need to, and then glazing it if we want to take it to the next level. So let's go take a look. Today we're going to be making a provisional three unit fixed partial denture using Tough Temp Plus. This particular time we're going to use the bleach shade. Uh, in order to do this, we need obviously our preparations here. We're going to be doing this on a model just because it's a little bit easier to show than in the mouth. Uh, and uh, we're going to need um, some sort of diagnostic wax up or starter uh, for a bridge or for an aesthetic case, a multi-unit case where uh, most of the time we're going to be doing this off some sort of a wax up. So here's our diagnostic wax up. And we're going to need some kind of matrix in order to make a really good provisional. That matrix could be something as easy as um, some quick set polyvinyl socks and impression material like bite registration here. Put in a little uh, quadrant tray like most of us would do for a single unit inside the mouth. That could also be done on the diagnostic wax up like this. Or uh, we're going to be using this clear tray here. Um, and this is made out of a material called copy plast from Great Lakes Orthodontics. It's a really nice combination of uh, flexibility and accuracy in order to make a really nice provisional. One great thing about Tough Temp is it does have light cure capability. And so if you're using a clear matrix like this or with clear polyvinyl siloxane impression material, you can light cure the uh, provisional through the tray. You obviously couldn't do that on a opaque material like this or a, a, a putty or, or a, any traditional polyvinyl siloxane impression material. But when you're using a clear matrix like this, it really gives us the opportunity to take the best advantage of this material um, in order to, uh, to, to get a really nice provisional done quickly. So now we're ready to make our provisional here. And so we're gonna take our tray and we're gonna load it with the tough tent. Another advantage of using these clear trays like this. You can really make sure you've got that filled up all the way, just the way you want it. And now we're going to seat that into place on our model. Obviously making sure that we are seated all the way. And now we're going to let that sit for just a, a couple of minutes here. Or because this is light cure, we can actually use our curing light to expedite this process. and do some multi-point curing around this clear matrix. Now we're ready to remove our matrix and then work the provisional off of the tooth. There we go. So now we have uh, our provisional started, and now we just need to start trimming this to get the best anatomical results possible. Now that we have our provisional made, it's time to trim it. And one thing that I do always on multi-unit restorations, and even a lot of times on single-unit restorations, is I will go in and take a pencil and mark the interproximal contacts. 
you can kind of see that on this material, you get a real glossy finish right there where it touched the tooth in front. So I'm gonna mark that to make sure that when I'm trimming this, I leave that pencil mark behind. If I leave that pencil mark behind while I'm trimming this, um, I know that I'll have interproximal contact on my provisional. So now the first thing I have to do is just start getting all of this flash out of the way, right? And this is a multi-unit, this is a FPD. So we've got some flash here on the Ponic and I've got to make this Ponic cleansable and all of that. But all of this flash right here is really what I got to get out first. And I will typically do that with um, a, a, a diamond burr in a high-speed handpiece um, at around 40,000 RPM. So just a little skinny burr like that will really help me to uh, knock off all those fins of, of flash and extra material. And so that's where I start. So we're going to start there first. So you can see a good amount of our flash is removed. We still have some to work with, but our interproximals are starting to take shape. Now we still have to work the facial here and we obviously have to work the interproximals uh, from the abutments into the ponic. We're gonna work on that now um, with that same burr. And then after that, we will move on to our next step. So now we've done some more shaping with our diamond burr at around 40,000 RPMs here. And you can see that we're certainly rounding into shape. We still have our interproximal contacts in place on both sides and things are looking pretty good. Now we, uh, you could probably cement it here and, and still be pretty good, but we're gonna try to take it to the next level. And so my next instrument for that is gonna be using a latch handpiece um, and then a uh, polishing disc. And a polishing disc, uh, especially a, a grid or coarse polishing disc, um, will really help to shape out those line angles. And then we'll start working on the uh, areas in between the abutments and the ponic. So now we're gonna use a polishing disc like this, a more coarse one, and we're really gonna try to work some of these angles. So you can see we have a little excess fin of material on the mesial of this canine. And so I'm gonna use this disc here to just hopefully help smooth that out a little bit. And we're really just working around that contact area. If we work around that contact area, we know we want to obliterate our interproximal contact and have to deal with any mesial drift while we're waiting for our restoration to be made. So now you can see the difference there. We have much better contours there. Now let's work over here. Same thing, we're just going to kind of thin. That area right around the contact, below it and around it. And so we still have a little bit of flash over here. On this angle, and the disc does a really nice job of thinning that material out. And getting rid of that flash. So now we're getting pretty close, but again, we wanna take it to the next level. So now we really need to work these connectors between the ponic and the abutments and really work to make those a little bit more anatomic and more cleansable for the patient. So for this part, I'm going to use a flame-shaped finishing burr like this on a relatively low speed. And I'm gonna to try to really just work these areas in here and then as they transition to the gingival there, to make it towards cleansable, we can get floss in between there and we don't have a trap of either provisional cement or plaque for the patient that would then make the gingiva very irritated while they're wearing the provisional. So I'll just take a burr like this. And I'll just work to deepen and refine those connection points 
so that they do look like three separate teeth, which is what we want. So now we're starting to see that establishment of that line angle between the canine and the premolar. Now we're going to work on the other side here and see if we can make it match. Okay, now that we've spent a little time with that flame-shaped finishing burr, we've got what looks like three separate teeth, and we do look like we have better, more cleansable embrasure areas here. We still have our interproximal contact marks still in place, and we've removed all of our flash. So we're pretty close at this point. We're probably ready to polish. But one of my favorite things about Tough Temp are the accessories that come with it, like this patch flowable material and this glaze. So let's say theoretically that we got a void in this when we were making this originally, and we got a bubble or a spot that didn't uh, fill in with material, and we needed to patch that up. Well, we don't have it in this one, but we're gonna make one. So right along where the hemostat marked this up a little bit, I'm just going to make a void there. So we got a bubble in our temporary, oh no, what are we gonna do? Well, that's where this stuff comes into play, this Tough Temp patch material, which works really great, and it comes shade specific. So we used a bleach shade here, we have a matching flowable repair material in a bleach shade. And so now we can use this to patch that up. Now, typically speaking, when you notice a void, it's gonna be right when you make the provisional. And so the air inhibited layer is still gonna be present on your provisional, so you can actually just add it straight in to the provisional and light cure it. Now on this one, we've adjusted it, and so we've probably taken away the air, inhib air inhibited layer. And if I were doing this clinically, I would then etch and do a little bit of adhesive, light cure that, and then add this. But most of the time when I use this, the air inhibited layer is still there and I don't need to use any bonding agent. So I'll typically just take this, Just squirt it into there. You can then just take a normal old composite instrument or whatever instrument you have handy. To place that with a little bit more accuracy. Wipe away some of the excess. And now we're gonna light cure that there. Now we're just gonna lightly finish that down with that same flame shape finishing burr that we were using. And now we will start our, process, our uh, polishing process. So you don't need any special polishing points or tips or paste or anything like that to polish it. Just polish it with whatever you use to polish your resin composite. In my case, I use these spiral wheels, uh, a two-step spiral wheel system at about 8,000 RPM. And I'm just gonna use that. I'm just gonna run over that just like I would polish a normal resin composite. And this stuff will polish very, very well and get a really nice polish on it. So I'm just gonna move this over it with very light pressure. This stuff does not need really high pressure to polish. And you will just gouge it out if you do use high pressure. So really light touch here. And I'm really just working that polishing point in between. I'll polish the occlusals a little bit. I'll polish the lingual a little bit. Now we're gonna to move to our second polisher here. And we're just gonna lightly coat around this. And tough temp polishes pretty quickly and easily. So within a minute or so, you can have a three unit provisional like this polished up really nicely. And your patients will thank you when you give them a nice smooth anatomic provisional that their tongue doesn't continue to play with for the week to two weeks that they're wearing it. So there's our polished finished temporary. That's a pretty nice result there. But we're gonna take it to the next level. And we're gonna do that with the included tough temp glaze. 
So our final step is to use our Tough Temp Glaze in order to get a really nice aesthetic result. Do I use this on every single unit crown? If I'm, Am I using this for a single unit um, upper right first molar? No, but when I'm doing multi-units or anterior provisionals, taking an extra 30 seconds that it takes to use this glaze material really, really helps. So I'm always gonna shake this up, make sure it's nice and, and, uh, and, and shaken. And then I just put a single drop in a little dappen dish. And I like to use a brush for this. So I'm going to grab my provisional, usually using a hemostat because I don't want to get my fingers all over this. And I'm going to use a brush to just evenly paint this on the surface of the provisional just to give us a nice, lustrous, Glaze. I typically only use this on the facial and the lingual. I don't really wrap this over to the occlusal very much, but I will put a little layer of it on the lingual to make this really smooth for my patient. So I'll just paint that on. And this is a light cure glaze. So after we paint it on, I'm just going to cure this. So here's our glazed, finished provisional. And now we're ready to try it in. So as you can see here, we have a really beautiful provisional that looks great. Look how highly polished it is and shiny from the glaze. Looks good all the way around. We have good closed interproximal contact, so we're not gonna get any mesial drift because we took that, that short amount of time it took to mark those contacts, it's gonna make our life way easier. And with really just a few minutes of uh, spending some time on anatomy, doing a good polish, doing a good glaze, we get a really beautiful provisional here. But one thing I always like to say is um, it all starts with the matrix. So the better matrix you're starting with, the better provisional you're gonna get. And when we use a beautiful, strong material like Tough Temp, you're gonna have no problems with this uh, uh, provisional breaking or coming out. This is gonna be a great provisional restoration for the patient that will hold up well and give you great success when it comes to uh, the day to try in our final restoration.